Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper with one of the Comms Prepper Helpers. Hey Preppers. And in this video we're going to introduce a new product from Harden Power Systems built specifically based on comments that you guys provided here on the channel. The Scout G1 is shown below. For those of you who do follow my channel, back in August we introduced Harden Power Systems Operator G1, a radio housing designed to fit in a 30 cal ammunition can, specifically designed to house Midland's Micro Mobile GMRS radio. Well, based on the positive feedback and comments here on the channel and sent directly to Harden Power Systems, it was clear that there was a demand for a larger unit that could accommodate a wide range of amateur radio equipment that wasn't vendor specific. So shown here on the table on the left hand side, we have a Yesu, an ICOM, and a Kenwood radio. All three of these mobile radios will fit inside the Scout G1. Right now I have the Yesu FT817ND in the Scout G1 and a Midland Micro Mobile. Now when this unit shifts from hardened power systems, it's going to be configured to house the ASU FT817ND. That was the first radio that this unit was designed around. And when we get into the unit, you'll see that there's holes in the deck up top for different spacers and bumpers to hold the equipment in place, plus two bungee cords that come across the top. I chose to remove all those spacers. You will get those when it ships from Harden Power Systems. Unfortunately, I left those spacers out at the retreat location, so I don't have them here to show you here in this video. So what I'm going to do here is reposition the camera with the help of the comms prepper helper and get a closer look at this front panel because the layout of this front panel was really driven by your comments and feedback left about the operator G1. There was a lot of things you guys asked for in this upper unit. So Bill at Harden Power Systems did include it in the lower unit. So we'll get the camera repositioned and we'll get a closer look. Okay, here we have the front panel. We'll start off with the RF connection. This connector is associated with the left hand bay. And this is here for radios that don't have a front panel RF connection. There's a cable that goes to the back, specifically built for this unit, that allows you to route the RF from the back of the unit to the front to connect to your antenna. Because you can put an HF or high frequency radio in here and you have grounding and counterpoise issues, there's a ground post here in the front that actually runs to both bays with the connectors hydraulically crimped and soldered. So once you get your radios installed and grounded in the back, you can hook up your counterpoise or your ground rod here. Above that is your external speaker. That's associated with the left hand bay again. And this time it's switched, unlike the operator. You guys asked for this, so Bill included it. You can switch between headphones or speaker. So if you're doing field operations and you want to maintain some noise discipline in the field, you can jack in a set of headphones and throw the switch to the headphone jack. The left hand and right hand bays have independent power switches so you can turn them both on and off. In the middle are cooling fans. That was another suggestion that came out of the operator it was a means to cool the radio equipment in the unit. Now these fans will not cool the actual radios. If your radio has its own cooling fan, these fans are designed to expel the hot air from the back side of the can, pulling cool air from the top, expelling it out of the bottom but work in tandem with your radio's own cooling system. So as your cooling system on your radio turns on and off, you can switch these fans here manually to have them on or off to expel some of that hot air from the can should it build up in the back side of the can. Down below, of course, you have the signature hardened power system, voltage and current displays, amps on the left-hand side, volts on the right-hand side. If you throw this switch off, that will turn off those meters, but as you can see, you can still leave your radios running. So if you want to maintain light discipline in the field in the evening and minimize the amount of light you're creating, you can turn off these displays here by throwing this middle switch. Down below, you have a direct connection to the battery. This is not shown in these two meters here, so if you're pulling current from here, it won't show here. To the right of that, you have a high current or 3 amp USB charging port so if you have your cell phone or tablet or some other peripheral with you in the field and you're looking to get a quick charge you can jack in here to the right of that we'll get this cable out of the way is an auxiliary power port in case you have another modem or another radio a third device you want to hang off the operator here with Anderson power pole connections you can connect right there to the right of that is the solar and AC charging port you can actually plug right in there and charge the internal battery up and we'll show you the battery once we look at the inside but this is the port for AC charging or solar charging of course to the right of that something else you guys asked for was a charging status display so the built-in internal charger 
and solar charge controller. This is a PWM charge controller. Your display actually shows right here on the front panel so you can monitor your current state of charge as you're charging it which is a really nice feature um, and the instructions are right here the state is right here when it's scrolling it's charging when everything's lit everything's charged up right now I don't have anything connected to that and to the right of that is the mic well for putting your microphone in down below is a slot here for a solar panel and I'll bring that out once we look at the internals of this unit but when this closes up in the can you have a nice 20 watt solar panel down here. I believe it's 20 watts. If I'm wrong, uh, edit and insert a comment there. But I believe it's a 20 watt solar panel that inserts right down here in the bottom and closes all up in the can. On the side here, there's two rubber bumpers. So as you close the lid to this ammunition can, this compresses the unit towards the back of the can and there's mill grade foam rubber glued to the back side of the can to help absorb shock as you're transporting your equipment. Now the radios up top here are designed, for my setup at least, is when I'm not operating I'll take these radios out and turn them sideways and that's the way I'm able to fit in these other radios here. So that's a brief overview of the front panel. It's a very impressive setup. Bill packed a lot in a small container here. It is a fat 50 but it's still a manageable size to take to the field and keep in a bug out bag or at a retreat location or even in the back of a vehicle or a car. And it's not vendor specific. That's what's so unique about this. Again, I have a Yesu here, an ICOM, a Kenwood. I have a Midland radio here as well. All these radios, all these mobiles will fit into this upper deck. And I have a complete ham radio kit ready to go anytime I need it. So I'm going to reposition the camera here with the help of the comms prepper helper. We're going to look down in the top of this unit and show you what's under the hood. Before we get under the hood of the Scout G1, I want to show you how you can lay different pieces of radio equipment in here. I have an assortment of equipment here on the table, but like I said, when this unit ships from the factory, it'll be configured to hold the Yaesu FT-817ND. There'll be a stop back here. Of course, there'll be a piece of plastic here in the center where these bungee cords hook underneath. And the initial design is to have the FT-817ND in the left-hand bay and then a peripheral like a modem in the right-hand bay. So here's the ASU FT-817ND. We'll just set that up there. You can see how it looks. Of course, your cable, I tucked them in below, would come up here and connect to the RF connection. You can bring your audio cable here to the side and then still set a peripheral here on the side and run two things at the same time. For example, like this Midland Micro Mobile would fit in there real nice. For larger radio equipment, you can depopulate this upper deck with the different tabs and the feet that plug in here and transport equipment sideways into the field with protective wrapping around them. I have foam rubber inserts that I use and take larger pieces of equipment to the field. So we'll set the FT-817ND aside and get something a little bit larger. I have a Kenwood 2 meter radio here that actually would fit in there without needing to be twisted to the side. There's plenty of space between the front and the back but I could still stow it this way and have the microphone and the manual here. We'll put the Kenwood aside I went to my neighbor's house and took his Yesu FT-8900R off his uh, shelf. And that radio, that looks like that would fit in there just perfectly. This knob sticks out a little bit further. So again, you could stow it this way when you're transporting it. When you get to the field to go operational, twist it around. ICOM's ID-880H D-Star mobile radio. This is the largest of the four that I have up here on the table. Would not transport well in the operating position here facing out, but could be turned sideways quite easily and be transported in the Scout G1. Another option you can look at with modern radio equipment is radios with the removable control head to give you a little more space. So we'll go ahead and take that off the ID-880H and now there's plenty of space to more permanently mount this in here and then you can stick the control head here on the side and pull that out when you go operational. We'll go ahead and show you the same thing with the FT-8900R Again, there's a lot of distance between the front and the back here. It wouldn't sit in there in the operating position. It too has a removable control head, so we'll go ahead and take that off. Now you have plenty of space. You can get that mounted in there, have the control head to the side, and pull that out when you need to go operational. So there's just a few products from all the major brands, Icom, Kenwood, and Yesu, to show you that this upper deck here of the Scout G1 has plenty of real estate to accommodate most amateur radio equipment out there in the field today. We'll go ahead and reposition the camera and look under the hood. 
Okay guys, we got a break in the yard equipment noise here in the neighborhood in Virginia. Now that we can see where you can put the radios here in the upper deck, let's open it up and take a look under the hood. There's two tabs here that are hinged with serrated edges so you can grab with your fingers. Rock this back and this plate here or deck actually folds up out of the way exposing your UB1290 battery. That's a 9 amp hour battery. This module here has a reset button here. That's your breaker. So if you pull too much current out of the unit, it trips. You can actually reach in here and reset it. You can see all the wiring here. Very nicely done. There's no flux. All the connections are good. Down over here where you can't see is one of the cooling fans or exhaust fans to take the hot air out of the unit and expel it. And then there's another fan down over here. The speaker is mounted up front here. This is the terminal lug for the ground on the faceplate that splits off to give you two connections for two radios. And this is really important if you run HF radios when you need that ground or that counterpoise. If you're running VHF or UHF or GMRS, you probably don't need to use this, but then you can tuck this up and put it down here inside so it's not in the way. This is the audio cable. Again, that routes up to the switch so you can switch between headphone or speaker and then goes into your external speaker jack on the back of your equipment. This RF connection and this audio connector is paired up with the left hand bay on this side. Here it exposes the two Anderson power poles. Again, these are both switched based on the front panel switches for the left hand bay and the right hand bay. And then over here, I'll try to rotate this into position is a little rocker arm here and under there there's a place to store two blade fuses. These fuses are not for any of this equipment here. They're just extra fuses should you need fuses for your equipment in the field. Harden Power System provides two 5 amp fuses but you can change those out. You can see here where the bungee cord attaches to this upper plate and I'll try rocking this back. On this back side here you can see that this is machined out to match with the battery to keep that battery shifting while you have it in the field and you're transporting. So everything is laid out really nice. If you ever want to change your battery, it's easy to pull it out. It's in a recessed machine spot that'll hold that in place. It's a nice little unit. We'll go ahead and fold this down. And very flexible. Offers a lot of options when you want to take different pieces of equipment into the field for a lot of amateur radio equipment. In this video we showed ICOM, Kenwood, and Yesu equipment fitting just nicely. Some equipment will allow you to actually put this in there more permanently with the faceplate pointing out so you're automatically ready to operate. And larger pieces of equipment can be rotated and put in here. Or if you have smaller items you can actually stack equipment side by side and run two different radios. Maybe have a Midland Micro Mobile GMRS radio on one side and a CB radio on the other. So what I'll do now is put this all back in the can and show you how it all packs up. We'll put two radios in here to show you what it looks like. And I'll also show you how the 27 watt solar panel fits into the bottom half of this unit. This is a solar panel that's an option you can buy with this unit that hooks right up to that charging port, but it too also fits in the can. So let's spin this around, put two radios in here and get it back in the can, wrap this video up and show you what it looks like. All right, here we have it guys, the Scout G1. You guys asked for it and Bill built it. All the suggestions you made for the Operator G1 when it was released have been included in the Scout G1. In this configuration, I have an ICOM ID-880H D-Star Mobile Radio, a Midland Micro Mobile over here. So in this configuration, I could do 2 meter, 70 centimeter amateur radio and monitor GMRS frequencies over here during an emergency. Those features you asked for in this new unit, a switchable headphone jack and speaker, an external ground lug on the front, switchable LED lights so you can maintain light discipline in the field, cooling fans to expel hot air created by radios that have internal cooling, that's switchable, you can turn those on and off. You can now see the charging status for the charge controller and the wall charger. Of course you have your microphone well. The slot down here holds a 27 watt 12 volt solar panel. I now have it inserted in the unit that hooks directly through this charging port on the front. So if you don't have AC power in the field, you can still stay operational. Hardened Power Systems did an excellent job with this. I do want to apologize to Bill for being so late with this video, but things have been busy around the retreat location working on my off-grid solar power project. But I'm glad to finally have the opportunity to introduce this unit here, and you will be seeing this again on the channel. 
Two other little objects that I got here that Bill is kind enough to send for this video are foldable kickstands with rare earth magnets that actually will stick to the bottom of the can. And you can stow these inside the unit and keep them out of the way. And tip them like this and they stick to the bottom of the can. So what I'm going to do is pause the camera here real quick and show you how these little kickstands work because they're really cool. All right, there we have it. I don't have my camera woman with me. The comms prepper helper had something else to do. But here are the two rare earth magnet kickstands that you can order with the operator to help tip the display up so you can get a better view. And again, you can fold them up and stick them right up inside on the can when you're storing your equipment or transporting it around. Very nice system. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the comms prepper introducing Harden Power System Scout G1 for all your amateur radio needs when you need to take it to the field. Thanks for watching, guys.